And welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And we're about to dig deep into the first topic of today. It's the name controversy. It's been on since December 2020. And after, you know, so much plea from Nigerians for the deadline to be extended because, I mean, February 9 was not going to be enough time for everyone to register and link their seams with their names. It seems the government has listened. And uh, Isa Pantemi announced just yesterday that the deadline has been extended for about eight weeks and Nigerians have until April 6th to register and link their SIM cards with their national identity numbers. Uh, here with us to discuss this is Bola. Laho Olochide, an economic analyst. Good morning, Sam. Thanks for being here again. Thanks for having me. All right. So would you interpret this as the government listening to the people to extend this, or is it just what is necessary? Uh, I, I think it's both, um, because it has implications even for the government in itself. Um, if you just cut people off like that, if you cut people off, we're talking about 200 million lines, active lines vis-a-vis 40-something -vis when we started. I think it's now 50-something, 50-something uh, million. So there's, there, there had been a huge gap. If you cut people off, you would drop the revenues and therefore the, the, the capacity for the telcos to pay you taxes. This was one of the key sectors that grew while all other sectors were nose diving. So it's, it's, it's wisdom to say, let's be able to find a way to make this work. Apart from that, don't forget that we started these like a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, it wasn't properly thought through. Uh, but then we've started. So the best thing would be to say, occasionally, let's sit down and appraise what is going on. Uh, are there areas where we need to make amends? Are there things we need to realign? And then realign accordingly. Um, and, and I think that is what government has been doing on, on this NIA. Mm -hmm. So, so let, let's go back to, you know, the um, beginning, you know, and the reason, you know, we're having these conversations in the first place. Uh, the, um, would you give kudos to the government for thinking, you know, about this? And um, what do you think that we hope that we can achieve at the end of all of this? Um, it will be, we, we have struggled with database uh, in Nigeria. And one of the biggest issue is identity. Who, I, my name is Bola Olojede. Who is Bola Olojede? So um, am I unique or is there another Bola Olojede? If I give you uh, my driver's license, is the name slightly different from what you have on other information that is Bola Olojede? So we have an identity problem and, and that is very significant. There will be a whole lot of things that we cannot do when you have identity problem. There is the insecurity issue, which I think is driving this. But beyond insecurity, even financial services, it is one of the problems with financial services. If I can identify you, if you don't have a unique identity, there's a limit <clears throat> to how I can deal with you. So it's, 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 it's perversive, the, the need for... Look at, look at when we're trying to do palliatives. We're trying to do palliatives, but we don't even know who the poor is. So the, the database issue, something that, you know, put together all the pockets and silos of, of identification information that we have and integrate them so that we know that if you are A, then you are A, is very important. So it's, it's, if we can achieve this, um, we will be setting a tone for some developmental planning issues. Good tone for developmental planning. Yeah, we, we know that... It's expanding for it's an expanding sector, you know, telecommunications, and the fact that you know more people now have phones more than before, and how lucrative the telecommunications sector is. But not everybody has phones, and uh, especially looking at children and secondary school pupils. And here we're talking about linking SIM cards and NINs. Would you say SIM cards is like the best way, really? And, you know, having phone lines is the best way to achieve an identity management system in the country. Phone is not actually, phone is just an element, like you rightly observe, and not everybody has it. But NIN is meant to cut across wider than phone. When we say we have 200 uh, million lines, the 200 million lines might just belong to 100 million Nigerians or even less because there are people with three phones. You know, my mom has about seven lines. 
you know, so there, there are all sort of that in the system. But NIN is a unique identity. We're just trying to um, take the element of phone because this is very important for the security side of things. But there are people who don't have phones. Even if you don't have phone, you are still supposed to have an NIN. Okay. In that situation, should it not then be because there was a deadline, really, basically, to link NIN and SIM, right? And even this deadline has been extended. So how about people who do not have phones and the deadline has elapsed? I mean, I'm not seeing the government talking about modalities to put this in place. People who, for the first time, will buy phones after the deadline, we're not talking about that. I, I, th I think what the government is trying to do is do a critical mass uh, using the phone. If you do, if you get 100 million NIN, you will have more than double where we were when we started. And then you can allow NIN. It's supposed to be a continuous thing. People are being born every exactly day. People are going coming of age yes. every day. So that the registration for NIN becomes permanent. It is a continuous project. But we will have achieved a critical mass by focus using the the phone to drive mass registration for NIN. Okay. okay. Um, we would say good morning to Mr. Okonu Abdullahi, the General Secretary, Private Telecommunications and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. Let's quickly bring you in on uh, the extension. It's another eight weeks. Uh, some people might argue that it was, you know, expected. Um, but I want to get your thoughts. Um, do you welcome this eight weeks? Do you think that it might also be extended again? Um, what's your reaction? Okay, thank you so much once again for having me. Uh, you could remember the last time I was on your program, uh, I made it clear that uh, the deadline they gave initially was highly insufficient, that it was not going to, to work. And uh, to somebody like me, I'm not surprised that uh, we are seeing an extension. And uh, as a matter of fact, the extension is a welcome development. But notwithstanding, I will still say that, uh, that uh, the eight weeks extension they still give is still in, uh, insufficient. It's not, it won't be enough to capture those that have not been captured. So at least for now, yeah? That's my, that's my reaction to this. Exactly. Thank you. I mean, the government has just published this in NIMC. It says 56.2 million NIN links to, SIMS, links to SIMS. Really, it doesn't seem rational. I don't know what you think about you know registering and linking about one of, about 150 more million more SIMS in eight weeks. Really, is it? It's, it's not realistic. Hmm. It's not realistic. But I think this, this piecemeal, there's a way it works with Nigerians. They will, they, will, they will move a mass again, do a bit more registration. We might end up having another extension, um, which is what I think will happen. Okay. Um, I also want to talk about the telecommunications um, aspect of it. It was a major contributor to our um, IGR and, um, um, of course, to our GDP um, in the last couple of years. Um, has this in any way, or how, how do you think that they are reacting to this extension now? And has this in any way affected... Uh, business for telcos. Mm, th thank you so much. Uh, in the sector, definitely the extension will be uh, will be welcomed wholeheartedly uh, because uh, I cannot imagine yanking off uh, over 100 million people. I mean, 100 million uh, lines uh, because of uh, inability to register the. I mean, to inability to link the. And I hand to, to various sims. I see. So it is a welcome development. And I tell you, to a very large extent, you see that the approach the government adopted has, in a way, put a lot of stress on the on employees working within the sector because uh, it has increased their workloads, you know, uh, trying to meet up with the deadline given by the government, putting the uh, facilities in in place and uh, working beyond the number of hours that they, they used to work before. So uh, relaxing it and uh, giving an extension is a welcome development and it is a great uh, relief for workers in the, in the sector. Um, I was going to ask you this. Should NIN, after this whole process, you know, 
this uh, national identity number, should the government not also consider having this registration done at the point of birth? Definitely, that's the, that's the way to go. It should be a continuous process. It's not a, a case of you giving deadline and uh, coming back to extend it. It should be a continuous process. Once a, a child is giving birth to, uh, a National Population Commission should have a vital role to play in this. As a child is being born, a registration is done and the NIN is allotted to each of the, of the children that is born. I think it's the way to go. That's the way to go. Okay. Uh, Mr. Olojiri, I'm coming back to you with this. Um, th there has been conversations about, you know, our population. There's been conversations about our borders being so porous that people just walk between two countries uh, freely. Um, in what ways do you think we could also work to ensure that every Nigerian is accounted for and we also know who is a Nigerian and who isn't a Nigerian um, and who the government is responsible for and who isn't? Um, one, one thing that just came to my mind as you were asking this question is, is it, is it possible that a non-Nigerian could register for NIN? And from all indications, it, it seems as if it's possible. Um, and that, that should be worrisome. We've been fraudulent about population numbers in Nigeria uh, because population drives everything. Um, if, if, even when, uh, when they were sharing the initial 100,000, I mean, the, the first things we read in the papers, was that Kano had more than Lagos, even when Lagos had close to 30% of the entire cases of COVID. So it shows how fraudulent we could be with numbers because it is a basis for sharing certain rewards. Um, but I, I, I'm hoping that as we continually go towards uh, electronic databases, um, biometrics like NIN will allow us, we'll begin to have more realistic information about how many people are even in Nigeria in the first instance. We've not had a census for more than 10 years, which is not allowed technically. So we don't know how many people are living here. So the question is, when we are planning, who are we planning for? How many people? How many children are going to be born? So what school facility do I need to make uh, available? How many teachers will I need in five years' time? How, ma how many healthcare centers will I need? All those things are not we are not able to properly plan them because we don't have this information. So hopefully, things like NIN will begin to help us set a tone for proper census. If you are going to do a census now, it's going to be different from the last one we had. This, in this age of biometrics and NIN and other information that we have in the space, we must be able to articulate those information and ensure that what we have is something we can work how, with. How does it also um, work with uh, with regard to security? Because like you just mentioned, you know, you, you're not 100% sure that a uh, non-Nigerian, you know, can't be stopped from registering and from, from getting, uh, you know, a number. So how does this help with security? You know, is the plan to, to block lines that are, you know, being used by terrorists or to identify numbers that are being used by the insurgents? If, um, if, if we are at least able to put a unique identification on every individual, it makes security to improve. Because what it means is that when you commit a crime and there are, you leave, the traces will always be there. If you use a phone, your fingerprint could be picked up from somewhere. That's if we have records of fingerprints anyway. <laughs> uh, increased use of camera and all sort of things. We may be able to we will be able to better identify people uh, with all, the, all this kind of information. The number one one is this, is this phone thing. All the kidnap issues, all the ransom demand and all the rest have been done using, using phones. You know? uh, and I think the government is less bothered about um, some other levels of crime that are a bit rudimentary. But mm. these ones are getting more complex. Let me bring in Mr. Abdullahi in, into this one. We know that the government has repeatedly said that, you know, this unique identification will enable them to track criminals and all of that. But we've seen many cases where cases of a, a disconnect between government agencies. So what's the guarantee that at the end of the day, when NIMC collates, you know, the identity, the phone number, address, contact details of Nigerians, that this will be properly synchronized with security agencies that they can track criminals appropriately? What's the guarantee for that to happen? Mm -hmm. uh, to a very large extent, uh, uh, 
it will be difficult for anyone to beat, uh, to beat his chest to say that uh, there will be a guarantee of a uh, uh, synchronization between uh, uh, law enforcement agencies, i.e. the DSS, the NIA, the police force, and the likes like that. It will be very, very difficult because uh, we have uh, seen a situation whereby in the country, uh, this, uh, will I say, an ego thing, rivalry between, I mean, among our uh, security agencies, you know. So I think uh, it's a discussion that needs to be announced. And, but most importantly, what is most necessary for now is this is for us to get this registration right. Once we get this registration right, at least we have taken a very good step, a very good step towards achieving all, stemming the type of uh, insecurity in the country. So by the time we fix this, then when the issue of uh, inability to synchronize among the security agencies come up, then we'll be able to adequately address, address it. But for now, I, th I tell you, it may be a very difficult thing for anybody to beat his chest to say that uh, it will be guaranteed that synchronization with, among uh, the security agencies uh, will be ensured. It is a very tall order, it's a very difficult thing to, to say. Mr. Olojere, he just mentioned rivalry between security agencies and how it might be difficult to have synchronized you know, operations and to have that synchronized NIN among all the agencies. But really looking at this now, I am thinking, how do you think this NIN registration might be able to help in tracking missing persons in Nigeria? Do you think that's a possibility that we can use this NIN and the contact details of people to have a database that, let's say your child is missing, you can easily put in the name of the person to be able to track you know, their whereabouts somehow, maybe <laughs> tracking them through their phone. Do you think that, Nigeria that can really get difficult. to that point in future? That, that, that would be a bit difficult uh, for tracking missing persons. It will, it will be challenging. Unless that missing person has some chips implanted on him that you can uh, use to track electronically. Otherwise, a missing person without, or if he's still using his phone, why not? But you see, let me bring up again part of what we are doing with this NIN. The NIN captioning requires print biometric information those biometric information are unique which means somebody came here there is no there was no camera and committed in crime and left and the forensic people came and gathered the print we have we will have a database of everybody that registered for NIN. their print their biometrics are there and we can cross check that print that we collected from a scene of crime into the database. We can know everybody that visited that place. I want or everybody to touch. that had just that touched something in that place. And you can begin to picture how that could help us to solve some problems. It may not solve all crimes, but it will help. This seems well. like this seems like it's on the level of theory right now. Do you think that we can get to that place in the future where we can have the requisite technology and the manpower, the skills, you know? you know, through these agencies to actually make sure that we track people using forensic analysis. We should be able to, because it's not even, it's not, no be today. They use it already in other countries and it is working. So why not us, even the James Aliches we used to read way back 30 years ago, they were already collecting fingerprints and cross-checking it against the database of fingerprints. The only difference then was that you know, for us, even if we collect fingerprints, we had no database of those criminals. So we can't compare it with anything. There's nothing to match it with. Now, with what we are doing, we have a record to match it with. And when they say this is this, this is this, it's a unique thing. Nobody can share it with you. So we know who was there. And, what the, and we can begin our investigation from that, from that point. So it, it will indeed help. Quickly, um, just before we go, um, share how this will greatly affect um, insurgency in Nigeria and um, our fight again, you know, to, protect, well, to make the country safe again. Yes, um, even insurgents are using phones. Uh, they are also transmitting things. Um, they also physically come into spaces, you know. So if we have 
Now, here is another question. I've never, I, I just crossed my mind. Are the insurgents also registered? I was just going to, I was <laughs> really that, thinking about that. Something. You know, you know <laughs> but I'm guessing, I'm guessing the idea is, you know, that when they are not registered, their lines will be blocked and they will find it difficult communicating with each other. I'm, I'm guessing so. Oh, I'm we can ambush them when they try they, to they, register. They, they, they probably can, can communicate using the internet uh, without necessarily having to use a SIM. You, you don't possible, need a yes. SIM to, to communicate. But at the same time, um, as long as they use phone that has a SIM, definitely we can track wherever that phone is. Or we can track who got that phone. Who registered it when we were doing this uh, registration? And we track that person. But if that still, person is missing, that means that person will be in the. But in it, see, this camp, still right? goes back to what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. If they had stolen somebody's phone, for example, and they use it for the operations, and you track the phone to an insurgent, it still comes back to me because it's my name that's registered. Yeah, it helps the investigation so all the same. Because by the time they get to you, they can investigate what is going on and what is not going on. And it's, it's also, you know, yeah. it now makes Nigerians more eager to make police reports. When exactly. exactly. When somebody steals your phone, you know the dangers. And you make a report. Yes, yes. to avoid being implicated right. in any security issues. We'll see, um, you know, how much, you know, uh, things change in the next eight weeks. Uh, see if Nigerians will either go back home and relax or will take it, you know, more seriously now that there's enough time. Yes. And get themselves registered and get their sims linked also. And beyond the eight weeks, I'm really looking forward to hearing reports of how the government actually uses the sim, you know, to tackle crime. I can't wait for the government to, or security agencies to come out to say we track this criminal, we averted this crime because we're able to track people through names. I can't wait to actually see how this oh, plays, plays out, out in the real world. Absolutely. Thank you very much Mr. Okuno Abdullahi who's joined us from uh, via Zoom and thank you very much Mr. Bolaho Olojide for, for your time on The Breakfast. Alright, stay with us. Uh, we have a bit more to share with you. First of all, Oji Uzokalu uh, sentenced to 12 years in jail, only got to stay for five months before the you know case was uh, well he had uh, technical issues and had to be uh, he was set free. Uh, but of course, he is now being sent back to court for his retrial, and there's conversations coming up from there. We'll be back. <laughs> 